the meninges are a vital component of neuroanatomy, and therefore it's extremely important that we have a detailed understanding of both their structure and function. And hopefully, at the end of this video, that's exactly what you'll have. The meninges are membranous layers that cover both the brain and the spinal cord. The meninges consist of three layers. The outer layer is the dura mater. The next inner layer is the arachnoid mater. And the very innermost layer, which sits directly upon the brain, is the pia mater. The meninges have two main functions. It provides a supportive framework for both the cerebral and the cranial blood supply. And also, acting with the aid of the cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, the meninges protect the brain and spinal cord from significant mechanical damage. So essentially, almost being like a shock absorber for the brain during fast movement of the head. Taking a closer look at the different layers, the outermost meninges, the dura mater, lies directly underneath the bones of the skull and the vertebral column. It's a thick and relatively inextensible layer. The dura mater may actually be subdivided into two sheets of tissue. These are the periosteal layer, which lines the inner aspect of the skull bones, and the meningeal layer, which lies deeper to the periosteal layer. It's actually between the two layers of the dura mater where we find the dural venous sinuses, and these are responsible for being the main source of venous drainage of the skull and drain into the internal jugular veins. The dura mater actually has its own blood supply, and this comes from the middle meningeal artery. This artery is a key factor with regards to trauma which results in an epi or an extradural hematoma. Another feature of the dura mater is that at certain areas within the skull, it forms thick inward projecting folds, which actually subdivide the cranial vault and brain into three compartments. These folds are referred to as the folk cerebri and the tentorium cerebelli. And they divide the cranial vault into the right and left supratentorial compartments and the infratentorial compartment. By compartmentalizing the skull, these dural folds help to reduce and limit the amount of movement that can take place by the brain inside the skull. Moving inwards, the next layer of the meninges is the arachnoid mater, which is the middle layer and lies directly underneath the dura. Underneath the arachnoid mater is a space which we refer to as the subarachnoid space. And this is important because it contains the cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. And it's this fluid which helps to cushion the brain during movement. There are small projections of the arachnoid mater, which we refer to as arachnoid granulations. These arachnoid granulations project into the dura and allow CSF to enter the venous circulation in the dural space and thus allow CSF to be drained. Continuing inwards, the final meningeal layer is the pia mater. This is located underneath the subarachnoid space and is a very thin tissue layer which is tightly adhered to the surface of the brain and spinal cord. The pia is so closely adherent to the brain that as it covers and protects the brain and its blood vessels, it actually follows the contours of the brain which are formed by the gyri, sulci and the fissures. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make sure you know what you need to know for med school, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com for more great videos, learning forums, and MCQs.